Hi guys, Neil Tappet here from Golf Monthly and in this video we are looking at the brand new drivers from Titleist, they're called the Titleist TS2 and the TS3. And I think the first place to start is with the name itself because I think it tells quite an important story about not only this driver but also the drivers that have gone in the past from Titleist. So TS stands for Titleist Speed. Um, and the whole idea behind this driver was to make something that from the very first hit was longer than any driver that you could, would currently be using. I think Titleist felt that with their previous drivers, whilst they were very good, they were designed to be real sort of custom fitting toolkits. And that perhaps from the first hit in a, in a fitting, maybe they weren't outperforming some of the other drivers on the market. So if you were going for a fitting, you might try a, a Callaway, a TaylorMade and a Titleist. And perhaps Titleist felt that in those first two or three hits, they weren't offering enough of a demonstrable difference in terms of ball speed, club head speed, distance, to really get people into that conversation and to really try and sell the driver that they've got. So that's what they've tried to do with their TS project drivers. They've done a whole host of things to try and add speed to the driver. If you're interested in what those sort of key technologies are, there's a whole host of information on that on the Golf Monthly website. Uh, please do go over there and take a look. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail for that, uh, on that right now, but what I am interested in is to hear what you think about Titleist drivers in the past. If you have used Titleist drivers in the past, hit the pause button, uh, leave a comment below. What were your thoughts on it? Did you feel like it was a, a great overall performer? Where did you think it was uh, strong? Where did you think it was weak? If you haven't used Titleist drivers in the past, again, hit the pause button and let, let us know why. We'd be really interested to know your thoughts. Now, I will focus on the performance, but before I do that, just a quick word on the looks. And I think both from the address view that you can see here and the sole view, it's very simple, it's very classic, it's very tight list. Uh, I was quite surprised about that actually, that given that they were changing the name of the club and some of the bold uh, uh, claims that they were making about the performance, I was surprised that it didn't look a bit more different actually than to the previous generation. So if I hold up the 917D2, which is the one I've had in my bag for the last couple of years, you'll see I don't think there's a, a whopping difference there. And I was quite surprised about that. If I hold it up from this view, you'll see that the 917 has a gray finish, TS2 or TS3 has a black finish, um, and that they have the same shape pretty much. So not huge amounts of difference from the previous generations. Um, now I've always been a huge fan of the way that Titleist drivers look. I love that pear shaped look. Uh, I love the understated kind of shelf appeal about it, but I appreciate it might not be everyone's cup of tea. Some people might like a more modern, more techy look. Uh, I'll let you uh, make your own mind up on that one. Uh, now, a quick word on the testing, how we did it, uh, before I get into the results. So what we did was about two or three weeks ago, I was fitted for both the TS3 that I'm holding here, which is the, the one I ended up with, and the TS2. And then at the end of the fitting, I then hit my own driver, the 917D2, this one here that I was fitted for a couple of years ago, up against the TS3 and the TS2 uh, to provide some numbers so that you can see exactly what the performance differences were and to ensure that those numbers were as robust as possible using Titleist Pro V1, uh, golf balls. So let's have a look at the results and I'm going to start by flashing up the numbers for my uh, 917 D2 driver. The club head speed 109, ball speed 165, uh, smash factor was good uh, on these shots. Uh, it was launching at 10 degrees, spinning at 2699 and the overall carry distance was 270, overall total distance was 295. Anyone who's seen any of my driver videos in the past will know this is pretty much right for me with this driver, with this Titleist driver. Those are the sort of typical numbers I find. Uh, I only hit three shots with it because I hit three straight down the middle, pretty much out the middle of the bat, so I was happy with the shots. There wasn't really much point in hitting any more. Okay, so let's compare that to the final driver that I was fitted for, the one that I would have walked away with if this was a, a real life experience. It was the TS3. Um, and a 9.5 degree head, the numbers here, it says 10.5, it's actually a 9.5 degree head with a hazardous smoke stiff shaft. Uh, it's in the B1 position, which is slightly flat, that just helps me start the ball straighter, I tend to hit a bit of a push. Um, and the numbers across the board have improved. So, uh, club head speed up a little bit to 110. Goal, uh, ball speed up a fraction to 167. Now I should also point out the smash factor was a little bit better at 1.52, not hugely better, but a little bit better. And that is going to offer a little bit more distance because that's more of a centered uh, strike. But the launch angle's also gone up to 11.2. The spin rate has gone down to 2391. And all of that, when you put it into the computer, it spits out an extra carry distance of seven yards over the previous generation at 277. But and an overall total distance gain for me of 11 yards. So 
two, uh, 306 versus 295. So that is a really big improvement in overall distance. But of course, that's not the whole story. And the reason that I loved the 917 was because of its accuracy, not because of its distance. So let's see how it performed in terms of accuracy. And as you can see, there's no real difference in terms of dispersion between the two drivers. And for me, I was surprised by that, actually, given that the shaft in the TS3, it, the stock shaft that I was fitted for, is half a, an inch longer than in the uh, than in the 917 driver. I was surprised that I was just as accurate, but I was. Um, now, I, I'll admit, there is something slightly nagging away in the back of my mind saying, do I want a shaft that's slightly longer in my new driver? Is that going to cost me accuracy? And I haven't done enough testing out on the golf course to say definitively either way. But so far, the signs are good. I have hit the TS3 quite a bit on the golf course. I don't think I've lost out on any extra accuracy over the previous generation. So it's really good to know that with Titleist, when they say they're going to deliver a new driver that offers speed, yes, it does, but they haven't forgotten about accuracy. For me, it's certainly at play within this driver, particularly, actually, when you take a look at the difference between uh, the best TS2 that I was fitted for and the best TS3 that I was fitted for. So I'm going to flash that up here and appreciate it's quite confusing. You're looking at a lot of shots here. These are all the shots I hit uh, with all the different driver setups during my fitting. But what you're looking for is the light green circle versus the light blue circle. Light green being t my best TS2. And as you can see, the dispersion is much wider with the TS2. And I think that all boils down to that weight cartridge. As I said before, that weight cartridge for me, being able to set it up in a fade bias position makes a big difference to how the driver performs overall. I didn't miss it less with, left with the TS3, but I did miss it left with the TS2. That affected the overall numbers. The overall numbers on the launch monitor don't like, look that good either. Now that not, might not be the case for you. If you're somebody, as I said at the start, that misses uh, all over the face, if you can miss it from the heel as much as you miss it from the toe, the TS2 is going to offer a greater MOI, forgiveness, which means that you'll hit more shots further down the middle of the fairway. But for me with the TS3, knowing that I tend to hit a draw through the air, being able to guard against that one that goes a little bit too far left really made a difference to the performance of the driver. Now finally, I'm going to talk about feel. The shaft that I was fitted for was 10 grams lighter in this generation than I was used to in the previous generation. And that did equate to me to a difference in feel. The first shot I hit was with a very standard off the rack TS2 that wasn't right for my game. The first shot I hit, I wasn't sure about the feel. It felt, it did feel quite sort of light, uh, a little bit like I wasn't in control of the driver. But as I went through the fitting, to me, the feel seemed to improve as I worked towards the driver that I ended up with. Now, uh, what I will do is I'll put up a shot with the previous generation 917 and the TS3 and you can make your own mind up as to whether there's a real difference in sound. I thought it was slightly different. In the end, would it affect my buying decision if I was going for TS drivers over previous uh, generation Titleist drivers? It wouldn't. I think the feel is uh, really good in the new generation. So there we have it. That's the two TS drivers for 2018, 2019. Guys, please do leave comments below. Let us know what your thoughts are on the two drivers. Uh, my verdict would be that Titleist have done what they set out to do. They wanted to produce a driver that was long and they've done it. This is as consistently long as the best I've tested on the market. But for me, the more important factor is that while, yes, whilst they are delivering that, that extra length right from the very first hit, they haven't forgotten about accuracy. They haven't forgotten about those ca uh, characteristics that make a driver playable, that make players fall in love with the driver. What they want to do is produce something that's long from the first hit, that gets them in the conversation, that you can then dial in. And if you can get both of those factors at right, you might end up with a driver that you really fall in love with and that stays in the bag for a very long time. The final thing to say is that this comes with a, a recommended retail price of £499. Uh, which is obviously premium, very premium. It's expensive. You won't find anything that much more expensive out there on the market. But what you have got is the cutting edge of what Titleist are able to produce in a metal wood. Uh, and it is well worth testing if you're in the market for a new driver. Guys, thank you very much uh, for watching this video. Please do leave comments below. Uh, but for, from here, for now, it's goodbye.